Morning, all. Thank you very much. So uh, my name is Nan Zhang. Um, I'm a senior consultant in GFT uh, Technology, GFT Financial. Um, so I've been working with the firm for more than four years, delivering a number of large-scale system integration projects, mostly in the regulatory uh, program areas, driving and defining the test strategy, and delivering uh, products um, in agile uh, delivery methodology. Uh, so today's topic is around test automation and agile testing. Uh, we look at the role the test automation plays uh, in an agile delivery framework. Right, so we start by looking at the uh, various bits and pieces of test automation, including the, the approach, the benefit, and the automation framework that GFT has uh, developed, and also industrialized test automation where GFT have a bit of experience in, then moving on to the Agile um, delivery uh, framework and Agile testing areas. So we look at the Agile testing scope, approach, activities, phases, roles and responsibilities, and then look at the role test auto automation plays in shaping uh, Agile testing. Um, so test automation approach. I think different organizations have different approaches, and in GFT, um, our approach is very much summarized um, in this slide. Uh, so we look at uh, increasing um, the effectiveness and test coverage uh, of all the um, software QA that we are doing, and um, have um, uh, achieved a decreased cost of testing uh, over time. Um, the automation framework, we're aiming to uh, provide a portable, reusable, maintainable, and can be transitioned to the client, because we provide a consultancy services. At the end of the day, we want the testing assets to be um, transitioned to, to our client, so something the client can be picked up and then realize uh, the value for money uh, for, for the investment. Uh, the automation framework should be reusable as well, so we want that to be um, utilized across functional tests, non-functional tests, and across various um, aspects of the project in different testing phases. Um, return of investment is a, a key thing, so usually uh, there is a bit of uh, investment upfront for test automation. And I think clients want to realize how, when I invest test automation, how can I achieve the benefit of it? That means a bit of analysis, a cost-benefit analysis, estimations upfront needs to be done. So we see this is a bit of a pot that we invest, a uh, number of resources invest upfront, create the framework, and then expand the framework. So at some stage, uh, the return we'll see, we'll see, okay, so all the tests can be run automatically, reduce number of resources, and achieve the benefit. So return of, of investment is something we usually do at the very beginning of the, of the project. Um, two selection. So two selection, I think, is, is fundamental to the um, test automation approach. And usually, uh, in projects in GFT, we're faced with sourcing uh, custom-built solutions or actually third-party, out-of-shelf product. Uh, it's not that black and white. So when you purchase um, or actually source a third-party product, usually you do have to build a layer of integration into the client mainframe, the client frame um, 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 technology architecture. One example recently that, um, that we had is uh, one of uh, one of the uh, investment banking client. We were asked to do a, a data comparison too, and that is to compare the data generated in the new system against production trade data. Um, the whole system of client is built uh, by Scala. Uh, we've been sourcing, sourcing uh, different tools um, out there. I mean, in fact, there are probably hundreds of tools out there that you could actually uh, source, be purchase it, or actually um, um, open source. Uh, but we had the time constraints. So the analysis is around there's time constraints and there's Scala technology. So everything you do do needs to be factored into the time frame and deliver the value in short term. There's also a licensing factor needs to be considered in. So in many of our clients, actually, clients have a pool of, of, of tools that are approved uh, and that are deemed to be um, less um, risky in terms of safety and security. Um, so with a number of factors, we ev eventually decided to build a 100% custom build uh, tool, data comparison tool, using Java. There were noises in the first place, but after uh, proposing with all the factors, uh, with, with all the uh, sort of uh, comparisons, and then eventually a client was very happy with the uh, data comparison too. Um, test automation solutions should also integrate with the entire Agile framework using continuous integration. Uh, so actually, it, the whole benefit of, of Agile testing is achieved. So benefits, I mean, 
I think the audience here, the majority of the audience, know the benefits um, really well, and I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but that's just the gist of the uh, GFT. Um, the GFT have, have really sort of um, um, considered. Um, so we increase the efficiency and the coverage of, of tasks through automation, and reduce the overhead and re reduce the cost, and also finding issues early uh, through um, test automation within this um, sprint by the Agile team. I think there's a interesting statistics by IBM is that any defects and bugs found during UAT, I think uh, cost up to 15 times more than finding and resolving in a scrum team. If any defects and bugs found, found in production actually cost uh, more than 100 times, up to 100 times um, than fixing within the scrum teams. So these are the interesting stats. I think that's usually talked about, but when we really uh, do the automation, people can say, oh, why can't you do it manually, et cetera, but I think it's worthwhile really emphasizing on this benefit so the client is aware of, of that and actually advocate and support the automation approach. Um, of course, it enables the, the realization of Agile uh, framework because the entire uh, sprint uh, in iteration test, continuous integration has to be enabled by automation. It's not possible through manual testing. Now, this is the um, test automation framework that I myself, as part of the GFT team, actually um, um, created. Uh, so it encapsulates quite a number of things and components. It encapsulates the GUI side and the, U the UX design, the server side, like database, interfaces, message queues, all of these things. But it also um, have elements of error handling, exception handling, and environment configurations, environment management, uh, and tools, uh, tool selections and technology selections. So we start by analyzing the common uh, functionalities and build the libraries for um, the common functions. That means that a framework is created with the right tool selection and then sprint after sprint, the automation framework is expanded and is gradually maintained and updated. So eventually, it's the whole testing suites to be utilized for functional and non-functional testing. The key words we're trying to emphasize here is usability. So it must be usable. So if we create framework, we want to make sure that it can be used and generate value. It should be reusable. So it can be replicated in, um, diff by different teams and in different environments, not just by the IT team, but actually can be replicated by production support team. So realize the, the value in the long term. And it should be maintainable. So after the framework, all the, the, the other layers of the elements should be easily expanded and scalable. And it should be robust. So it should be less error prone, which is really the, the advantage over uh, manual testing. Because um, it has been tested, and every time when it's rerun, it does find issues. And it should be flexible and portable, which means that it can be utilized in dev environment, CI environment, SIT, UAT environment, and pre-prod and production support environment, not just restricted to one of the environment. Um, in past few um, projects that GFT has been working on, especially in the uh, regulatory area, we've been taking on a few uh, large programs which uh, contains a number of sub-projects on a large scale. And that's where the industrialized test automation really comes into play. Um, so in one of the examples, the, um, so one of the clients that I was working for uh, last year, we had a number of Scrum teams, number of projects with a parallel releases. It's four or six releases along, along the, um, the line with, within a year. And each project in each sub team was trying to build automation on their own. But the approach we eventually took is industrialized test automation, which means to select one or two of the pilot uh, projects or pilot um, Scrum teams to create a test automation framework with the whole context of the program in mind so that the framework can be expanded, is scalable. Um, and then all the rest of the teams can actually follow and avoid a situation where the wheels have to be reinvented. So we ch achieved that. And after the building the, uh, the framework, it was eventually rolled out all the um, Scrum teams to, to various sprint, uh, sprints and also um, through um, different um, uh, project teams. So eventually the whole program has a unified and consist consistent approach of test automation to selection um, and framework. So we realized the synergies uh, by adopting uh, this approach. And I think the, the eventually the result was um, the whole uh, platform and the whole program was, um, um, the QA was also automated, um, realizing the, the benefit. 
Um, so having discussed a lot about test automation, we're moving on to the Agile uh, framework and also delivery approach. Again, I think di different organizations and institutions have their interpretations of Agile. And in GFT, this is the framework that we would like to, uh, to roll out, and we have been um, sort of um, helping with clients to build uh, different systems. So a product backlog is created uh, and maintained along the way with all the user stories, technical tasks, enhancement, uh, defects, and also change requests. It is constantly being prioritized uh, through uh, the life cycle of the sprint. And the product owner, together with, with the Scrum team, including developers and testers, will be doing the sprint planning session on day one of the sprint, making sure that we have a finite list um, of, the, of, of the sprint. And we have a few uh, mid-sprint checkpoints to ensure that we're on track to deliver the user stories. At the end, a show and tell um, a demo is organized. Uh, it does um, require business users' constant participation, which is the whole point of Agile. And we run the retrospectives to look at what could have been done better, what you are, in particular in GFT, we, we have approach where it's sad, mad, and glad. So what you're sad about, well, there's not really much, too many things about sad, and what you're glad about, and what you're mad about, uh, to really stimulate the whole team and to contribute and to learn, uh, take lessons learned and take it forward. One key concept regarding QA here is around the definition of done. The definition, definition of done in GFT 100% includes the um, completion of, of testing. I've seen in some of the organizations where uh, the, the we're, we're running Agile, but actually the testing is a bit outside the Scrum, which is not a truly Agile approach, but I admit there's a transition um, process. But in GFT, we do ad adopt and, and insist the definition of done must include testing, and that has to be run through automation. Imagine if I were a developer, and I, I, I code nine days, and uh, on the last day, day 10, here you go, test it. That's not possible to finish all the testing. So that's why a continuous integration environment is created to enable continuous code deployment, automated deployment, which kicks off the automated testing. So it's, it's run on a daily basis, and by the end of day 10, we've tested everything, all the user stories in scope, um, and, and um, um, deliver the, the sprint. So, uh, this is a GFT version of the Agile testing approach. So I'm going to concentrate on some of the keywords here, and that is test-driven development and behavior-driven development, TDD and, and BDD. So for TDD, again, it's, it's not a new concept, but it's something in GFT we've been really advocating. So within the Scrum team, you've got developers, testers, uh, Scrum master, product owner, architect, everybody, sometimes tech lead. But the, the QA resources really play a big part in the requirement gathering, requirement definition, user story definition, and of course, writing acceptance criteria. So the QA is instead of the traditional approach where they're separated and isolated and only comes in at a later stage, they are upfront in defining the requirement and writing the ACs. And BDD is really an extension of TDD where um, the behavior is, is defined upfront and the, the, actual, the, the user requirement is actually written in the way of acceptance criteria. So uh, one example that, that I've been working on in the past few months is a big data project with one of our tier one client. Um, it's on data transformations. Uh, all the test cases is run through BDD and all the user story requirements is defined through BDD. So it's actually 100%. We start from user story and then test the system and then test the system integration. Everything is run through BDD. After a few sprints and demos to our client, and our client was actually saying the BDD is really the jewel in the crown of test automation, which is the, um, to quote, the, the actual real words. So TDD and BDD is supported through exploratory testing and incremental testing. So the traditional approach where the, the QA resources and the business users write a script with um, specific steps and acceptance um, criteria. And that really, um, I think, um, restricted the, the access, uh, restricted sort of the, the mindset of, of many of the uh, QA resources. But the way with BDD and, T, uh, and TDD is that after defining all the acceptance criteria, because QA resources do have the knowledge of the business requirement, they, they kind of went off the path a, a little bit and tried to explore different negative cases and edge cases and, and achieve the, the eventual result. And all of this is driven through, again, through test automation. So we want to automate as early as possible and finding issues as early as possible. And 
Again, in, in our job testing in GFT, we look at the various elements as on this slide. So test automation doesn't just support functional testing, uh, which is the main thing, but supports non-functional testing, all the performance testing, all the stress testing, system availability testing, SOC test, and security. And it also looks at the, um, the test design part, which is the BDD and the TDD, enabled through test automation. And data management is a key thing I want to stress, because uh, data is becoming a, um, a, a topic. And in GFT, we have a data practice, which works closely with the testing practice. Um, to, to make sure that we uh, comply with EU reg increasingly, I think, st stringent EU regulations and data protections and data masking. And this slide shows the, the agile testing uh, phases and processes. Um, so for sprint N, we run the, the sprint test against user stories, have a CI uh, environment to de deploy everything, and um, have daily deployment and daily automated testing. In, this is typically a sort of large scale a client project where they do want to run SIP and UAT, so which is lagging behind uh, a sprint. But I do want to mention the future of, of UAT. So up until now, I think UAT is pretty much script-based and user um, participation. Everything has, is sort of still in waterfall sense. But in future, in GFT, we want to help our client transition into a situation where the UAT is fully automated. So there is less and less user participation, almost zero, uh, only the sign-off. So everything is run automatically. Click on button, run the UAT, produce a result, and use a sign-off. Uh, that's the future state that we're trying to, um, to um, help to shape. Um, test automation plays the part in almost every aspect of, um, of agile testing, be it UI, UX design, back-end, continuous integration, or even full end-to-end -end solutions where you have upstream and downstream systems. Um, there's a feed um, needs to be consumed and needs to be generated. Um, support non-functional testing as well. Uh, so I think in, in GFT, um, with the past few years working with clients, mainly in the Agile area, we're quite convinced and believe that in future, waterfall is going to be phased out more and more, although there's still a sort of a mindset changing by, by clients. And Agile is to be adopted more and more, increasingly more, um, supported by BDD, TDD, and test automation. So test automation can only play a, a even greater and bigger role in agile testing, and that's the way to be, and to shape UAT to be fully automated. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for your time.